my assignment for today is basically something about the principle of whatever that exists on earth also exists in the heavens meaning there's not a single thing that is functioning or existing in this dimension without it existing in the realms of the spirit so whatever that exists here on earth exists in the spirit i also want to say this that change is difficult you understand like it's not easy for you to just transition from one thing onto the other so i understand where you're coming from i understand the process and the change that you are going to and i know without a doubt that i say certain things that if probably if i was you and if i was in your situation i wouldn't say yes i wouldn't just follow i wouldn't just agree so i understand the fact that this is a journey this is something that you got to take your time to understand before you come out. So I said it the other day, the quickest way to be out of the lies is to completely stay out of the lies or stay out of what you know and look it from the outside in. In that way, you will address it constructively without any emotions. By the minute you attach your emotion to the knowledge that is being given from this platform then all of a sudden it will be very difficult for you to let go even with all the evidences right before your eyes i just want to say this and i understand what you are going through and i feel what you are going through and i know that change is not easy Aquaba, Aquaba, Aquaba! Welcome to the Melanated Truth in your name, not for all your many days be brave. And that's the day, yes, yeah, our body is in the middle, our body is in the middle, Nana, Nana, no, my sister, the Yama, me, as I say, I see, me, the two me, Biara, which a young way she be, I see, oh, yeah, our body and a car, me, me, pefe, de, yeah, na, you be, you know, found with the F, the monk of, yeah. Wow, yeah, actually, I'm just excited. I'm just excited for us being in the truth. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, I feel the boom hot talk. It's exciting times. It's exciting days ahead. And I just, I am just in a place of total assurance that indeed we are coming into our own. And when I'm saying things like that, I like to say it in key because they are listening. I was surprised to find out that actually they are listening to me. And when I say they, you know who I'm talking about. And so I just said it in chi. They are listening. So um, I'm excited that even as small as we are, they are paying attention to the things that we are talking about. Ooh, they don't want us to get big. I'm telling you, they don't want us to grow because this number that we have is already troubling some ears. Some ears are going at no, 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 no. I saw I saw something yesterday is that these videos are inappropriate for you. I'm like, what? Yes, they said it to my videos that my videos are inappropriate. What would make my videos inappropriate though? We're just about 200 and something people. What would make my videos appropriate? Oh, it's not about the number of people that is following you, but it's about the message that is being propagated on this platform and they are listening. So um, I'm going to be a bit mindful about certain things. Not that I'm going to coward away and not say the things that I might say, but certain things that would bring automatic red flags. And I'm, I'm, not go I'm going to prevent them, prevent saying them. And when we talk direct or via WhatsApp or email or what, whichever communication tool that we have, then I can tell you for what it is. You get what I'm saying? Today, I don't want to take much of your time again. 
let's go straight to the gods of the Bible. And today, I specifically want to talk about the divine counsel. I was going to talk about Amen today, but I'll do it on Monday. So specific, because tomorrow I want to talk about health. Our future is based on our health today. So let's go straight into the gods of the Bible. The divine counsel. Let's get to Psalm 33 verse 6 and read something. Psalm 33 verse The heavens were made by His word. They are hosts by the breath of His mouth. Praise you. Hmm. The heavens were made by his word. So whose word is this? And you see, you would be quick to just jump in and say, oh, it's talking about the God of Israel. Don't forget, he made the heavens and also the host of the heavens. The heavens were made by his word. Whose word? They are host by the breath of his mouth. Whose mouth? The heavens were made by his bread and the host of the heavens by, by the bread of his mouth. Whose word and whose bread created? This is different, definitely talking about the creator and the host that the creator created in the heavens. Now, this person that created the host of the heavens is unique amongst the host of the heavens. So when there's a comparison going on, the creator will not be compared among the host. So back on to Psalm 89 where he says that he is greatly feared amongst the council, the host of the heavens. It was not including the one who created because it is the one who created that created every single one of their host. Let's look at Nehemiah 9, 6. If I read, thou even thou art Lord alone. So the question here now is who is the Lord alone? Thou only thou at Lord alone. Who is it? Remember, we just read Psalm 33 and it's talking about by his mouth and by his breath. He created everything that there is and he created the host, the beings, the divine beings, the supreme beings that exist in the heavens. Okay? Thou, even thou art alone. So whenever we talk about the creator, you will realize that there is no comparison between the creator and everybody else. But whenever we talk about the God and the God of Israel, it will always come in comparison with the other gods and try to prove that amongst all the gods, I am He. But when we talk about the Creator, the Creator is not equating Himself or, or comparing Himself to anybody. See, thou, even thou alone, thou hast made heaven, the heaven of heavens, with all their hosts, the earth, and all that they are therein, the seas and all that they are therein, thou preserved them all, and the host of heaven worshipped thee. You get so the host of heaven are the one in direct contact with the creator. Not all of them though, because they are hierarchies. So the ones, the host, the major, the operos. Right? They are the ones that have direct access and in contact with the Creator. And man also go through the host of heaven. So it's like the chain of command. The Creator, the host of heaven, who are the council of the heavens or council of divine. Then we have in between them, of course, is the messengers, the Malachim. Then we have man. That is the hierarchy. You cannot just jump and say, I am before the Creator. No, no. You have to go through the host. That is how the Creator created them. There's not a single thing on the face of this earth that exists independently. Every single species or creation or creature is dependent on the other one. That's why we have something like the food chain. You understand the food chain? So, because there's this chain of command flowing fluidly, there's no contention in that structure. But it's amongst the classes 
that always the contention rises from. Because you cannot fight that which is above you. Let's look at Isaiah 40, 26. And I read, Lift up your eyes on high, and behold, who had created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. Mm. Who has created these things? He called them all by names, by the greatness of his might. For that he is strong in power, and not one fill it. Are you getting it? It's just beautiful. Lift up your eyes on high. Behold, who has created these things? And I, I can look up and break it down, but when I break it down, we are not really ready for that lecture yet. We would get there, but we are not there yet. You understand? I need to make you come in. So instead of me going from the 2014 to break it down, I just want to stay here to show you something. Look up your eyes on high and behold, who has created these things that bring forth their host by number? He called them all by the greatness of his might. For he is strong in power and not one fit. Anytime anybody hear the word the host of heaven or the council of the divine, everybody is quickly thinking about angels. That the hosts of heaven are all angels. And, 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 and the subject of even a God being a part of the host of heaven sounds like an adulterous word that can be ever said concerning the God of Israel. So we, 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 are, we have come to this place where the minute we hear the word, the host of heaven, the gods do not have any part in it. Meaning the gods are the ones that are falling and the, the gods are the ones that are with the devil. So the gods have nothing to do, nothing in common with a divine host. But it will shock you by these few scriptures that I read that that, that whole perception of the host of heaven being the malachim or what, or what most people know as angels has actually got nothing to do with the malachim or the angels. But as a matter of fact, this is talking about the God, the powers, the numerous hosts that the creator created to ensure the balance in the universe. Let's look at seven... Let's look at 2 Kings 17, 16. And I read, And they left all the commandments of Yah, their God, and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove, and worshipped all the hosts of heavens, and served Baal. Are you getting it? So they worshipped all the hosts of heaven this verse is not describing which part of the host of or which heavens are we talking about with this host in particular mind you these people were melting images and and building images to represent the host of the heavens you see here that and it even included and served bow so it means that Baal is not necessarily or only sitting in this dimension, but Baal is a God that is also amongst the host of heavens. So where are these hosts of heaven? They are not the fallen ones. When we talk about hosts of heaven, they are not the fallen ones. And a lot of people will say they are angels. They are not. The gods are not angels. They are not Malachim. Malachim are the messengers. They are the messengers between the God and human beings. The creator does not speak to a human being directly. But the creator goes through the God. The God knows everything that there is to know about the will of the creator. The creator goes to the gods. The gods communicate the message to mankind through the Malachim. So you see here that these images they were building, they were not just building for the God of Israel, but they were worshipping other hosts. 
That is why I say that when we talk about comparing the God of Israel with these other hosts, the God of Israel does not stand up. You realize that he is among the hosts and among the hosts he is highly reverenced. But he is not the creator. Are, are, are you following? Let's go to 2 Kings 21. 2 Kings 21. 3 to 5. Let's expand on it. 3 to 5. And I read. For he built up high. He built up again the high places which Hezekiah, his father, had destroyed. And he had and he read up altars for Baal and made a groove as did Ahab king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them and he made images and represented all the host of heavens and served them and he built altars in the house of the Lord of which the Lord said in Jerusalem I would put my name so he goes ahead to build another altar in the house that the, the God of Jerusalem, the God of Israel said, I will put my name there. So he has taken a bit of the creation and said, this is where I am putting my name. The other gods were also putting their names on the other regions, the other places, the other cities. And he, the God of Israel, decided to put his name on Israel and in the temple in Jerusalem. So he has demarcated his portion and he wasn't willing, willing and ready to share with anybody. But these people at the same time were worshipping other hosts of heavens whilst they were in covenant with God of Israel. That is why it became sinful. Because you cannot be in covenant with one being and go and pay tribute to another being. Let's go to 2 Kings 23. 2 Kings 23 4 to 5. And I read. And the king commanded Hilkiah the high priest and the priest of the second order and the priest of the door to bring forth out the temple of Yah all the vessels that were made for Baal and for the grove. So you see another God predominantly always mentioned in the scripture Baal. And for the growth, that's another another God. Or what you say, groove. This is basically growth. And for all the hosts of heaven. So there are multi multitude of the hosts of heaven. There are a lot, not just one. And he burned incense. And he burned them without. And he burned them without Jerusalem in the field of Kindron. And carried the ashes of them unto Bethel. And he put down the adulterous priests whom the king of Judah has ordained to burn incense in the high places in the cities of Yada and in the places round about Jerusalem. Them also that he burned incense unto Baal, unto the sun, and unto the moon. So these are all gods they were worshipping. They were worshipping Baal, they were worshipping the sun, and they were worshipping the moon. There's a verse in Psalms 80, 80 something that talks about the fact that God is a sun. So they were, they were, in their interpretation, they were bowing down to a different sun, obviously not the God of Israel, and they were bowing down to Baal, and to the moon, and to the planet, and to all the hosts of the heavens. They were bowing down to them and worshipping them. Why are they doing this? Because all of these ones feel they are also within their right to be worshipped because they are as equal with the God of Israel. Because they know themselves that they are equal with the God of Israel, that is why they knew they also deserve to be worshipped. And he brought out, that the verses, he brought out the groove from the house of Yahweh and out of Jerusalem onto the brook Kindron and burned it at a brook kindron and stamped it small to powder and cast the powder thereof onto the groves of the children of the people. So these are all gods 
that the children of Israel who were in, in covenant with the God of Israel had turned their backs and were worshipping these gods. That is why the God of uh, Israel was angry and was jealous because he fought for them. So how dare them go and give credit to where credit is not due? Are you getting the picture? Jeremiah 19, 13 or Jeremiah 19, 13 I read. And the house of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as a place of Tophet, as a place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roof they have burned incense unto all the hosts of heaven and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. So they have poured out drink offerings unto other gods and they are burning incense to the host of heavens. Obviously, these are not the Malachim, but these are also gods that the children of Israel were worshipping because they knew the other nations were worshipping these gods. Because when they were in Egypt, it was the norm of the day. So the God of Israel showed up and said, worship only me. Don't worship anybody else. Because he is building a nation for himself. Therefore, he went into covenant with them and said, so long as you keep these laws, you got to worship me. Don't worship any other these any of these gods. Any of the so all these gods, all these hosts of the heavens makes up the divine council. The divine council include Asrat. The divine council include Baal. I know this is heavy stuff. And I, I mean, how on earth should anybody say that the divine council included Baal and, and Asherah and Amen and, and Malcolm? How can anybody say this? But these were inclusive of the host of heavens. Let's go to Psalm 82. Let me show you something there. Psalm 82. Let's read from the verse 1. It says, God standeth in the congregation of the Almighty. He judged amongst the gods. So God, so when you see it's specifically written capital G O D, capital G, capital O, capital D. Most of the places when you read, listen, they didn't know people like us would come up and study and dig and search deeper. Study it carefully. You realize that everywhere. I don't know which Bibles, but when you read, when you use the old King James Bible, everywhere you see the word God is small letters. It's, it's capital G but small O, small D. But Psalms 82 in the new old King James, I don't know about the new King James. Let me check for you. Let me quickly check the new King James for you. The new King James don't have it. Mm -mm. All the new King James, is still, all the new versions don't have it. But the old the old King James says has the capital O. Capital. Let me check this old King James and see if this has it. Let me check this old King James and see if this has it. Oh, Bible versions there we have a lot because we we love to study. It's very important because I want to show you something that you probably have never really paid attention to. It doesn't have it either. It doesn't have it either. It doesn't have it. The old key, it is so important because it shows you who was standing in the middle of the congregation and this was not the God of Israel. Whew. It shows you clearly that this was not the God of Israel. So God, capital O, cap, capital G, capital O, capital D, standing in the congregation of the mighty and he judged among the gods and he judged among the gods so the creator stood in the midst of the all in the congregation of the gods in the in the divine council and he started judging all the gods so you cannot be a god that is judging all the gods so the creator has set a system that this system judges all the gods he has a representative this is beautiful but there's a basic principle that rules the world i said it earlier whatever that happens in the heavens 
also happens on the earth and whatever that goes on on the earth also happens in the heavens right we'll come back to psalm 82 but let's go to deuteronomy 18 to 22 judges and officials shall thou make thee in all thy gates which the lord god of israel giveth thee through thy tribes and they shall judge the people with just judgment and these judges what are they supposed to do they are supposed to judge the people with just judgment so as it is here on earth so it is in the divine council these gods are supposed to judge the people justly and unbiasedly so every god is supposed to deal with his own people thou shalt not rest judgment thou, sh thou shalt not respect persons neither take bribes or gifts for a gift doeth blind the eyes of the wise and perverts the words of the righteous that which is altogether just shall thou follow and that thou mayest live it and inherit the land which Yah, the God of Israel giveth thee so as it is on earth so it is in heaven so as the God of Israel gave them a pictorial blueprint of the system the judiciary system in the heavens the prophet Micaiah saw in a vision let's go to 1 Kings 22 from 19 he says and he said hear thou therefore the word of the, the Lord I saw the Lord sitting on his throne so he saw an image on the throne right and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right and on his left the divine council okay and the Lord said who shall persuade Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ram Ramoth Gilead and one said this manner and another said another and there came forth a spirit and stood before the Lord and said I would persuade him and the Lord said unto him with wherewith and he said oh like what would you do I'm reading the old King James forgive me and I will go forth and I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets so the divine council got it there was a problem on the face of the earth and said listen I need somebody to go and confuse Ahab and one opted so this was the council of the God of Israel sitting and having a conversation with his council members because he is the what the God of Israel so he has his own council which I said it in the beginning and I was showing you that in the divine realm we have the main supreme beings council and we have the sub councils by each and every single God so the realms of the spirit is not such that anybody at all can get up and do whatever they want to do. No, they are structured. All the gods cannot just get up and do whatever they want to do. That is why when a god corrupts his or her way, another god can rise and rebuke that god in a higher order. Not just an ordinary god or a messenger, but another god can rise. Do you understand? The angels cannot rebuke gods. But the angels are messengers. They have they do not possess the authority to rebuke God. We don't have understanding or knowledge. That is why we talk anyhow. But under normal circumstances, you have no right in audacity to speak against another God. You know? So here the God of Israel was dealing with man, and he says, What well, I need one of my counsel as it is on the earth so it is in the heaven as he was telling the Israel to set up a council that judged the God of Israel even though he was a God of all the Israel and had his own council by yet in the divine realm a God cannot just get up and do anything they want to do as it is made to believe in Christianity where one God can decide I'm killing everybody else and nobody can tell it no there is always a system that you need to go through in the divine council a protocol a protocol type that you got to go through for you to be able to execute something so before a god comes out to do something either one majority of the gods have agreed or that god is going to pay for that which he has done so now let's come back to the divine council psalm 82 let's come back to psalm 82 and i continue to read 
God standing, so the Creator standing in the midst of the congregation, or you can put Amen Ra, who was the representative of the Creator. But again, I will teach about Amen Ra on Monday. Standing in the congregation of the mighty and he judged among the gods. How long would ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? And accept the person. How do so you are standing in the gods? How are you doing wickedly? You see, I used to read this scripture thinking that it's referring to man. You'd understand it in a second. How do you defend the poor and the father? So he's asking these or the wicked instead of defending the poor and the fatherless do justice to the afflicted and the needy deliver the poor and needy so these are the jobs that the God are supposed to do they are supposed to defend the poor they are supposed to defend the fatherless they are supposed to do just to the afflicted and the needy they are supposed to deliver the poor and the needy they are supposed to rid them out of the hand of the wicked so the God are supposed to always rescue that is their job this is not talking about the Malachims or, or the, the cherubim. No, this is talking about the God. The, the, the job of the God is to protect and fight and defend. Not one God. Are you getting the revelation? That is why I keep telling you, you have to get in touch with the power of your background, with the authority of your background. Because the creator kept them in charge of you. That they should protect you, that they should defend you, that they should fight for you. These are the jobs of the gods. So when you go to a, anybody that has a god behind him, you cannot just kill that person. Listen, you cannot kill a person that has a god behind them. You cannot destroy a person because these gods, this is these are the assignment. The gods were created to protect the creation. To protect the creation nature to protect everything that is why we have gods in the forest protecting the forest that is why we have gods in the rivers protecting the rivers that's why we have gods in the mountains protecting the mountains and each and every single one of these gods have their entourage have their mannequin their messengers that is why a small river can contain a god and so many spirits in one small river one small place that's why a God can be in trees. What is the God doing in the trees? The God is protecting the trees. That is why Hollywood makes movies of trees moving and talking and fighting. This was the purpose of the gods. So you read Psalm 82, it says, so, You were made, you were assigned to defend the poor, to defend the fatherless, to do just to the afflicted and the needy. In fact, I... I should change the subject from just divine counsel and, and make it uh, the job of the God or the, or the responsibility of the gods. I should make it, I should change the subject. I, I'll think about it instead of just making it. Because listen, these are the things that the God are supposed to do. But because of ignorance, we ourselves have run away from them. We don't want to have any, hey, you are evil, you are evil. No, gods were created for you. To work for you and they report to the divine council. Ah, you'd understand it in a minute. Defend the poor, fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and the needy, deliver the poor and the needy, rid them out from the hands of the wicked. They know not, neither would they understand. They work on in darkness, and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Listen. Everything is in disorder. So you are supposed to do justly and protect all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Oh, that's, where, where did I read this? Where did I read it? Oh, yes. Now the earth is without form. Ooh. Are you getting it? When the gods left their duties and followed corruption, now everything was taken out of form. Everything came out of the place. And now darkness came. So there had to be a restoration of the earth. Not recreation. Restoration. That's a bit beyond. We'll get to it. Don't worry. Let me just stay with the responsibilities of the God or the duties of God. I'm looking for a cute title for it. I'll find something, I'm sure. 
Everything I've got, the earth, the foundations of the earth, they walk in darkness. So where, what is this describing? This is describing before Genesis 1-3. This is Genesis 1-2. They know not, neither would they understand. They walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of place. I have said, you are God. This was not talking about human beings. I have prayed this prayer bullet for so many years. That finally, when I discovered that, wait a minute. This is not talking about man. This is talking about a God. And say, ye are God and all ye are the children of the creator. <laughs> all ye are the children of the creator. The capital G-O-D in the old King James. You are the children of the creator. But ye shall die like men. And fall like one of the princes. So you were created as God. But you will lose your authority. And you will die like men. Oh boy. So now you see the divine council is charging the gods. That led to the destruction of the first world. So the gods that were in charge of the first world that lost their post and, and, and started corruption and all that. That is why the man that lived hundreds of thousands of years ago failed because corruption had taken over and the gods were just doing everything. So everything lost its cause. Darkness took over. Shook. Everything was shut. So because of that, you would die like men. Arise, oh God. So now the capital G, capital O, capital D is telling the small, the capital G, smaller O, smaller D, that arise, oh God, and judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all the nations. So at this time, the God of Israel, before this time, the God of Israel was not given the mandate to inherit the whole earth. This is deep. The whole earth was not in charge. The God of Israel was not in charge till this point. That is why he now came to make a promise, a covenant with a group of people and says, well, you know what? I will make you great. The reason why he could say, I will make you great is because he knows the promise that he was promised with. I am not making this up, Psalm 82. Take your time, read it, break it down. You would understand what this is and you understand the duties of god what god are supposed to do and the ones that failed they were died like men they were they, they died like men but the duty of a god is to protect you is to serve you as you in hand also do what you have to do in the realms of this earth to complement their responsibility in their realm they are also doing their job this is the divine counsel. This is the responsibility of the gods. The gods are not evil. When the gods did evil, listen, if the gods were evil, why would they do evil now? If the gods where you are God and you shall die like mere men because you have done wickedly, you have defended the, you have go, you have gone in bed with the wicked. If the gods are evil or were evil or are evil because there still are a lot of gods today, right? If they are evil, why are they facing judgment? If the gods were created by the devil, why are they facing judgment? Are you seeing the picture? God were created by the most side, the creator, to protect you. That is what I have for you today. I come your way same time tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about health. Listen, they are so sensitive when you talk about health. I'm telling you. Because the truth is that they don't want you to get well. Don't miss tomorrow for anything. I'm talking about health is going to be exciting. Thursday, I talk about relationships. And Friday, we'll talk about Spirit Friday. Stay blessed. I love you. Have a great night. See you same time tomorrow.